Hello and welcome to a new episode of 7 Facts. If you love geography or history, subscribe right now, I promise it'll be worth it. Buryatia is a constituent republic of the Russian Federation, located in Siberia. This is not a small republic, it's almost the size of Germany. But unlike Germany, where more than 83 million people live, Buryatia is home to less than 1 million people and 40% of those live in the capital city. Nevertheless, Buryatia is a place well worth discovering, so keep watching the rest of the video. While Buryatia is an ethnic republic, meaning it's meant to represent a specific ethnic group, in this case the Buryats, they represent only 30% of the population. The rest are mostly Russian ethnics. Still, this is the center of Tibetan Buddhism in Russia, as nearly 20% of the people adhere to this faith. By the way, the Buryats are a people related to Mongolians, so the presence of religions other than Christianity is not that surprising. The territory of the present-day republic has been inhabited by several Mongol tribes during the Middle Ages and before, and Buryats are the descendants of those people. However, Russian presence occurred pretty soon after that, as early as the 17th century, when Russians came here in search of wealth, furs and gold. They gradually expanded and built forts in this territory and slowly integrated it into the Russian Empire. It wasn't until 1923 that the Buryat Mongolian Autonomous Soviet Socialist Republic was created, thus giving the local people some political representation. To this day, Buryatia enjoys a high degree of autonomy, although, given the current political situation in the country, this is to be taken with a grain of salt. The capital city of Buryatia is the city of Ulan Ude. This is the largest city in the Republic, where nearly 40% of the population lives, about 400,000 people. The settlement was officially founded in 1666 by Russian Cossacks as a fort. Due to its favorable geographical position, it grew rapidly and became a large trade center which connected Russia with China and Mongolia. Today, you are free to visit this faraway and probably unknown city, but that wasn't the case during Soviet times. Before 1991, Ulan Ude was closed to foreigners. Today, one of the main attractions of the city is one of the largest Lenin heads in the world that sits in the main square. The head is 7.7 .7 meters tall and weighs 42 tons. It was unveiled in 1970 in honor of Lenin's 100th birthday and to basically remind the local population who was in charge, so it is an interesting piece of history. Aside from its cultural attractions and capital, Buryatia is a nature lover's paradise. Almost 80% of the territory is covered by mountains and more than half the shoreline of Lake Baikal falls under Buryatia's jurisdiction. Lake Baikal, meaning the nature lake in Mongolian, is the largest freshwater lake by volume on the planet, containing nearly a quarter of our freshwater. And with a maximum depth of 1,642 meters, it's also the world's deepest lake. And it's also one of the oldest, estimated to be between 25 and 30 millions of years old. So yeah, it's a pretty great place to see. Probably the best way to visit Ulan Ude is by train. And not just any train, because Ulan Ude lies on the route of the world-famous Trans-Siberian Railway. If you board the train in Moscow, be prepared. It'll take 3 days and 12 hours to cross the 5,609 kilometers that's between these two cities. But this is one of those trips that are well worth the time. The railway, which started to be built in 1891, reached the city in 1900, thus immediately connecting it to Europe and later to East Asia. This is, by the way, one of the main reasons why Ulan Ude's population exploded from 3,500 in 1880 to 126,000 by 1939. Many Buryat ethnics, who are descendants of the Mongols, practice the philosophy of life called Tengrism. Tengri, by the way, means the mighty blue sky. 
It's characterized by shamanism, animism, totemism, poly and monotheism, and ancestor worship, and was the prevailing religion of the Turks, Mongols, Hungarians, Bulgars, and possibly the Huns, so it used to be a big deal. According to this faith, the sky is the supreme deity and created the worlds, both the visible and the invisible one, and both inhabited by spirits. These spirits live all around us, in animals, mountains, forests, rivers and people, and are called the soul. Practicing Tengrism means to keep a balance between these spirits. That is why everyone and everything should be deeply respected, whether it is a living next door neighbor or a river flowing by. If this balance is disturbed, an intervention of the shaman, who is a spiritual guide chosen by the spirits, is required. These were 7 facts about Buryatia. Please leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this content. Leave your comments downstairs and don't forget there's a Patreon page where you can support this channel. I hope to see you next time. Bye.